we're going to do a pretty good overview of class E or class echo airspace. So you have these notes right here given to us by the FAA. You can pause it, you can screenshot this, but we're going to use this as well as the airspace profile in this figure that we've gone over before just to look over the information. So class E echo airspace. It's where aircraft, so like manned aircraft use IFR and that's instrument flight rules to fly in this airspace. There are multiple types of class E airspace. I think there's like four. We'll go over that in the next chapter, chapter three. We're currently on chapter two. If class E airspace is depicted on like a sectional chart, it's going to be based below 14,500 feet MSL. And MSL is just mean sea level. So notice how class alpha airspace starts at 18,000 feet MSL. Class E airspace is going to start a little bit below that. Now, if class E airspace is not depicted, it's going to start at 14,500 feet MSL. So instead of stopping at 14,500, right? And then everything below it is class E. Well, everything above 14,500 to, but not including 18,000 would be class E. The base, so that's like where our class E echo airspace will start at is usually around 1,200 feet. This is AGL, not MSL. Just be aware of that. Class B, C, and D, and A, uh, they typically only deal with MSL, whereas Class E operates with MSL as well as AGL. So Class E, if you look at this chart right here, you can see that we have 1,200 feet AGL. So that's where it usually starts, or 700 feet AGL, or it can also start at the surface. So if you look at the outside right here, this blue, it starts at the surface. Just to kind of summarize those numbers, if class E airspace is depicted on a sectional start chart, it's usually going to be based below 14,500 feet MSL. So that means the start of it will be below 14,500. If it's not depicted, that means it's going to start at 14,500 feet and go up from there. Now the base usually will start at around surface level 700 feet AGL or 1,200 feet AGL. Some class E airspace depicts MSL instead of AGL, so you just have to watch out for that. And it will typically extend up to, but not including, class A, which is 18,000 feet MSL. Here's something to note. All airspace above FL, and FL stands for flight level 600, is class E. And typically when we have like these smaller numbers like this, 600, you're going to want to append two zeros to that. So really, it's not 600, it's 60,000. So all airspace above flight level 60,000 is going to be class E. I've said before that you need a ATC authorization to fly in class E. That's not always the case, and that's usually not the case, but there are some things to watch out for. Federal Airways, which we'll go more into detail later, but Federal Airways are usually in class E airspace, and they're depicted by like a blue line. They're going to start at around 1,200 feet AGL, and they can go up to class A airspace, which is 18,000 feet MSL. They can go up to, but not including that. In most cases, again, a remote pilot won't need ATC authorization to operate within the airspace, but it's as most cases because you just should be cautious of like TFRs, which are temporary flight restriction, uh, certain military training that's happening there, or the federal airways. We're gonna keep going through the FAA guidebook. Those videos will be in the description below the like button. It'll be in the playlist too to help you study for your part 107.